another fun one. We're graphing and we're comparing to our parent function, f of x equals x squared. So this one clearly looks quite a bit different. Uh, we've got a multiplier out front that is not one, it's negative one thirds, and we are subtracting two at the end. So we expect this to look pretty different than our parent function, which looks like this. Vertex centered at the origin, um, and then the growth follows your perfect squares to the left and right one, up one, because one squared is one, to the left and right two, and then we go up four because two squared is four, to the left and right three, and then up nine because three squared is nine. So this is going to have a little bit of a different um, shape to it. Right now we only have an x squared term, which means our parabola is going to be um, centered around the y-axis. We're going to have an axis of symmetry at x equals zero, the y-axis. So uh, if I'm going to use a table to graph, um, negative two to two is going to work out real nice. Um, we're going to use a calculator because I've got to input these in here. And we're getting to the point where we really don't want to do this by hand. Uh, we want to be able to get through this quickly and efficiently. So I'm going to type this in. I'm going to start with a negative. It's really important that I start with a negative as opposed to actually hitting the subtraction symbol. If I do that, you can see it's going to try to subtract it off of the previous answer. So I want to do negative. And then for me, anytime I enter a fraction, I always put it in parentheses. It's 1 divided by 3 in parentheses. Um, sometimes you need parentheses around your fraction. Sometimes you don't. But if you always put the parentheses there, you don't have to worry about the rule for when you need it or don't. It's just always on there. So this is my negative one third. Uh, I'm going to input an x squared. So I'm going to put that in parentheses. So it's negative two and that is getting squared. Uh, and then I'm subtracting two at the end. So now subtract two. Um, all right, negative 3.3. And we can just round that. We're just graphing to get kind of approximate values. Um, negative three and it's about 0.3. That's technically a third. So if you wanted to write negative three and a third, that would be okay too. I'm going to pull the thing back up and I'm just going to change that two to a one. So I'm now inputting negative one and I'm going to have about negative 2.3 or negative two and a third. I'm now going to change it to zero. So I'll pull it back up. I do need to use the delete key to get rid of that negative, the del. That just gets rid of a single thing, and now I can overtype and make that a zero. So I'm putting zero into my function with the calculator, and I get negative two. Now I want to just input a one, so I'll move to the left, overtype the zero, make it a one, negative 2.3. Now I'll input a two, input a two, negative 3.3, a three and a third. Uh, okay, so let's plot those points at negative 2. So from the origin, we're going to go to the left 2. I'm going to go down 3 and then a little bit more in a third. 1, 2, 3, and I don't go all the way to 4. I just go down a third below where 3 was. So it's a little bit lower. At negative 1, uh, let's see, I'm down 1, 2, and a third. And at 0, I'm at exactly negative 2. At 1, I'm at negative 2 and a third, so just a little bit below negative 2. And then I'm here at negative 3, negative 3 and a third. So those are my points about as accurately I, as I can draw. Um, you don't really get them on as perfectly when they are decimal values and you're graphing by hand, but we just want to make an attempt at as accurate as possible. It's lunchtime. Uh, okay, so we're going to compare it to the parent function. Well, clearly a couple things are different. The parent function, the vertex is at the origin and it's oriented up. It's also growing um, to the left and right one and then up one. And that is not happening here. So let's go ahead and get our comparison down. First thing, we have a reflection. And that is because of this negative. And then we also have a shrink. These are not going to the left and right one and then down a full value, they're only going down a third. So we have a shrink by a factor of one third. And that's because we got the one third right here. Okay. So the negative makes the reflection. The one third gives us the shrink. Then also the whole thing has been shifted off of the origin right here, right? The vertex is now at negative two. So we also add to this, we have a shift down two. All right, um, and then just to clarify on a couple things, axis of symmetry is still remaining right here down the center. So if you were asked to identify the axis of symmetry, 
I'll just kind of abbreviate here, axis of symmetry. It is the vertical line, x equals 0, right? It's going for 0 at the origin. Your domain, x is all real numbers, and that is because the arrows are going forever left and right. Your range is not all real numbers because we have a maximum. We have a top value, and it's everything down from there. So um, it's everything as long as we are less than or equal to our top value, which is negative 2. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Message me anytime with questions.